Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So last two videos, I have completed two category of ratios. That is liquidity ratio and second one solvency ratio. And this is the third category of ratio that is called activity or turnover ratio. So in this video, I am going to explain you what do you mean by activity or turnover ratio and what are the different significant ratios which come under this category of activity or turnover. So if you want the complete perfect knowledge, watch all the videos from beginning. Don't join in between and don't leave in between. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject accounting for management. Select the videos of financial statement analysis. Be clear about the concept of financial statement, financial statement analysis, what is the need, what is the importance, what is ratio analysis, how it is used, what is the importance, then classification of ratios. All these things are a must if you want the complete command on this topic. So before going ahead in explaining this uh, activity or turnover ratio, take the screenshot of the points. Then I'll explain. Now, <clears throat> activity or turnover ratios. These ratios will be used to find how effectively the resources of the business are used how efficiently all the resources in the business the resources are stock how the stock is utilized how customers or debtors how payables and how the working capital fixed assets and total assets are efficiently utilized in the business so for evaluating the effectiveness and efficiency of resources we apply activity or turnover ratio so activity or turnover ratio measure the effectiveness with which it uses the available resources. They indicate the speed with which the resources are being converted into sales. So every business is concerned with sales. How efficiently, effectively it is utilizing the resources in converting into sales. That means how the resources are used to maximize the sales. Then the significant activity ratios are what are the different significant ratios which comes under the category of activity. First one, inventory turnover ratio or stock turnover ratio. This is very important ratio. Many times it has been asked in the examination. So what is the significance I'm explaining here? It indicates the number of times the stock has turned over into sales in a year. How many times we are converting the stock into sales. Stock means the goods which are purchased for the purpose of sale. So how many times in a year we can be able to convert the stock into sales. So this times, how many times we can get by applying inventory turnover ratio. It is calculated as, what is the formula? STR, stock turnover ratio is equal to cost of goods sold or cost of revenue from operations. Earlier, in old terminology, it was called cost of goods sold. But nowadays, due to the changes, the terminology used is cost of revenue from operations. Name has been changed, but the content will be same. Earlier, we used to call it as cost of goods sold. Now we are calling it as cost of revenue from operations. So cost of revenue from operation divided by average stock or simply cost of goods sold divided by average stock. This is the formula for stock turnover ratio. Now cost of revenue from operations is nothing but revenue from operations minus gross profit. And what is this revenue from operations? Earlier we call it as sales. Now we are calling it as revenue from operations. So sales and revenue from operations are same. So revenue from operations minus gross profit, what you get is cost of revenue from operations or simply cost of goods sold 
in old terminology cost of goods sold is equal to sales minus gross profit right next average stock in the formula denominator we have average stock average stock means opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 this is average in case information regarding cost of revenue from operation cost of goods sold is not known then revenue from operations sales may be taken in the numerator in the numerator we have cost of revenue from operations but in some problems we cannot be able to ascertain it will not be given in the problem the cost of revenue from operation then simply we take revenue from operations in the numerator or simply sales in the numerator and similarly if average stock cannot be calculated then closing stock may be taken in the denominator denominator we have to take average stock but average stock can be calculated when opening stock is given in many problems opening stock will not be given we cannot be able to calculate average stock in that case denominator we can take closing stock so this is the alternative emergency formula due to lack of information we can take sales in the numerator and closing stock in the denominator or uh, uh, cost of revenue from operations in the numerator uh, or revenue from operations in the numerator and closing inventory in the denominator now stock turnover ratio can also be expressed in terms of number of days it takes to convert the stock into sales there are two methods of calculating this stock turnover ratio one method will get in times this formula of stock turnover ratio will give you number of times in a year for example if you substitute you get six that means in one year six times we are converting the stock into sales another method of expressing this ratio is in terms of number of days how many days it requires to convert the stock into sales for calculating number of days the formula will be number of effective days in a year divided by stock turnover ratio this is called conversion stock conversion period so in the problem if it is asking you stock conversion period that means you have to calculate the stock turnover ratio in days so first you calculate stock turnover ratio by this formula then you apply this formula number of effective number of days in a year divided by stock turnover ratio you will get number of days required to convert the stock into sales and inventory turnover ratio of 8 is considered ideal so we cannot make it a fixed rule but rule of thumb we can say normally if the stock turnover ratio is 8 it is quite good that means it should not be below 8 it should be 8 or above that will be better so convert into sales uh, a high turnover ratio indicates that the stocks are fast moving and get converted into sales quickly if the uh, stock turnover ratio is higher 10, 8 10 12 it means the stock is converted into sales rapidly fastly fast moving however it may also be on account of holding low amount of stocks which can cause shortage but keeping a high stock turnover ratio is also not good it means that very fast we are converting the stock into sales that means there is always a danger of shortage of stock we have to keep sufficient stock to meet to meet the demand of the customers so if the stock turnover ratio is very high there is always a danger of shortage of stock this is the complete explanation of stock turnover ratio in examination they will not ask you only to calculate stock turnover ratio they ask you to give the interpretation so whatever i am explaining that is the interpretation of stock turnover ratio next second activity ratio is debtors turnover ratio or receivables turnover ratio in old terminology it was called debtors nowadays we are not using debtors we are using receivables so ultimately debtors and receivables are one and the same only name has been changed so debtors turnover ratio or receivables turnover ratio so debtors turnover ratio expresses the relationship between trade receivables and the sales the relationship between trade receivables or debtors and sales then it is calculated as credit sales or 
credit revenue from operations divided by average receivable the formula for receivables turnover ratio or debtors turnover ratio is net credit sales in the numerator and average debtors in the denominator or in new terminology net credit revenue from operations credit revenue from operations in numerator and average receivables in the denominator now in case information on credit sales is not given sometimes in examination in the problem net credit sales information is not given so simply take sales or revenue from operation in the numerator and denominator average receivable sometimes average receivable means opening receivable plus closing receivable divided by 2 but many a times opening receivable may not be given in that case in the denominator we can take closing receivables we can't take average so we'll take closing receivables or closing debtors the data uh, receivable turnover ratio can also be expressed in terms of number of days this is the times if you apply this formula you will get dtr data turnover ratio in times similarly we can calculate we can also calculate receivable turnover ratio in terms of days so what is the formula in, in terms of days so it takes the receivables to get converted into cash so how many days it requires to convert the receivables into cash so it is it is called as debt collection period so debt collection period means number of days required to convert the receivables into cash to convert the debtors into cash so how to calculate that one debt collection period can be calculated by using this formula number of days in a year divided by debtors turnover ratio or receivables turnover ratio so whatever turnover ratio you get here that will be taken in the denominator and numerator number of days effective number of days in a year this will give you debt collection period how many days it requires to convert the debtors into cash a high receivables turnover ratio or low debt collection period is indicative of sound credit management policy suppose if the receivables turnover ratio is more or debt collection period is less it indicates that the credit management policy is good because we have to convert our receivables into cash fastly fastly if we convert the receivables into cash it is better for the business we are getting frequent cash right and a receivables turnover ratio of 10 to 12 and a debt collection period of 30 to 36 days is considered as ideal ideal means normal we can't apply this uh, this rule strictly in every organization it differs but normally if we say 10 to 12 receivable turnover ratio or debt collection period of 30 to 36 days is quite normal that is about debt or turnover ratio or receivable turnover ratio the third activity ratio is creditor turnover ratio or payable turnover ratio this is opposite of debtor's turnover ratio now creditor's turnover ratio will express the relationship between net credit purchases and average payables average payables so it expresses relationship between trade payable and the purchases it is calculated as payable turnover ratio is net credit purchases that will be taken in the numerator and denominator average payables the new terminology is payable old terminology we call it as creditors so creditors or payables means one and the same now if information regarding credit purchases are not given in the problem sometimes the detail regarding cash purchase credit purchase is not given only purchase is given so that purchases we take it in the numerator similarly average payables means opening payable plus closing payable divided by 2 but opening payables may not be given in the problem we can't calculate average payable so in that case we take closing payable in the denominator closing creditor in the denominator right now bills payable uh, payable include creditors and bills payable when we say payables here in denominator the payables include creditors and bills payable similarly in this uh, receivables turnover ratio when we say receivables it includes debtors and bills receivable receivables means debtors and bills receivable
payable means credit terms and bills payable right in case average payable is not given we can take closing payable payable turnover ratio can also be expressed in terms of number of days just like receivable turnover ratio in case of payable turnover ratio we can express it in terms of number of days here you will get number of times if you apply this formula you will get number of times how many times we are making the payment for purchases in a year now number of days so in that case it will be called debt payment period we call it as debt payment period number of days required to make the payment for purchases so what is the formula number of days in a year divided by payable turnover ratio whatever turnover ratio you get here that will be taken in the denominator example the payable turnover ratio of 12 or more implying a debt period of 30 or less indicates that the firm is not able to get the best terms of credit that means the payable turnover ratio should not be more than 12 12 or more than 12 it should not have similarly the debt payment period should not be 30 or less this indicates that we are not getting a good terms from the suppliers this is about payable turnover ratio now working capital fourth ratio working capital turnover ratio now this ratio is calculated by cost of revenue from operations in new terminology according to old terminology it is cost of goods sold cost of goods sold divided by working capital and working capital means current assets minus current liabilities so denominator working capital current asset minus current liability numerator cost of revenue from operations or cost of goods sold a high working capital turnover ratio indicates effective utilization of firm's fund if we are having high working capital turnover ratio it shows that the firm is utilizing its funds effectively that's it now fixed assets turnover ratio this is the fifth ratio fixed assets turnover ratio the formula is net sales divided by fixed assets so we take net sales in the numerator or revenue from operations we can call it as sales or revenue from operations divided by fixed assets so the a high fixed asset turnover ratio indicates better utilization of firms fixed assets so if this fatr is high it indicates we are better utilizing our fixed assets last and final ratio is total assets turnover ratio just like fixed assets turnover ratio we are taking total assets revenue uh, turnover ratio numerator will remain same that is net sales or net revenue from operation we can call it as sales or we can call it as revenue from operations so revenue from operation divided by total assets here we have denominator fixed assets here we have denominator total assets higher the total assets turnover ratio greater is the ability of the firm to utilize the investment in the business to utilize the investment in the assets of the business so these are the six commonly used activity or turnover ratio so in examination apart from problems they may give you a theory question also explain the activity ratios giving examples of significant activity ratios so first of all you have to explain what do you mean by activity ratio this ratio shows how effectively we are utilizing the resources of the business so important activity ratios are 6 so if you watch this videos with full concentration definitely while doing the problem you don't find any difficulty because already you know the formula for each of the ratio and also the significance or the interpretation easily you can give so one more last category of ratio is left that is profitability ratio so inshallah we will take up the last category in the next video